So it's a very, very welcome return for Jeff Downs. Hello, Jeff. Hi there, Kevin. How are you? I'm absolutely fine, thank you. So we're going to talk about a couple of things about yes in Europe in a minute, but we're going to start off with Asia in Asia. And this is an amazing prog rock box set. And there have been plenty of these box sets released in recent years, not least the Quest, which I have on my my shelf here. But Asia in Asia is a real stunner, isn't it? It's got CDs, vinyl, Blu-ray, a beautiful large booklet, printed memorabilia, an enamel badge, fabulous Roger Dean artwork, including posters. So what was it, Jeff, that made this performance worthy of such a lavish release? Well, I think the thing was that it had ne- never been um, released commercially before. Yeah. So I think people were relying on, you know, bootlegs and that that kind of thing. And you know, it was a, it was a very epic concert in terms mm-hmm. of not just um, you know the fact that we were in Japan or certainly I was for the first time. I think yes. more to do with the fact that you know it, it was a, a technical problem that that. Um, you know, bouncing off three different satellites. I think it was the first yes. time a live broadcast had been uh, been carried out from uh, Japan. So it's pretty hairy stuff because at that time <laughs> it was very, very expensive to. Um, you know, now now there's zillions of satellites, but then you know, 40 years ago there weren't, there weren't that many satellites. So you know, from a technical standpoint, it was it was pretty amazing that they had ground stations in Australia and you know, somewhere in Africa as well. I think you know, it was going up and down. Uh, but you know, thankfully, it, it, it all held together and to get it get it done, and uh, you know, and, and, and beamed across the whole of the states uh, to the the big MTV audience, which had built up them. So it was a, it was a pretty monumental show, and uh, mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why we felt that you know it was worth putting into a you know a, a good setting like a box set, and uh, yeah. uh, and having all the, the trimmings that were go with. Yeah, so I very much enjoyed looking through and reading the the large booklets that you've got in this set, and I was fascinated to see that you actually recorded a concert as a backup for uh, the eventuality of that live feed going down. But as you said, it it went fairly well according to plan, Um, or did it? Because there were some things mentioned about even the stage setting and all those sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, there, there there were hitches, but I think in essence, the main event passed by fairly without too many hitches yeah we had to to do an entire duplicate show wearing mm-hmm. exactly the same clothes making <laughs> making the same moves as much as you could uh, so that in the event of uh, they would have been able to switch it very quickly so they were running the the, the backup show in, in tandem with the uh, the live show but yeah. You know, it would have been uh, well. It didn't happen, so uh, well, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, what you get is the real deal. Absolutely. So there's a long tradition, isn't there, of rock bands having to replace members at short notice? And for this concert and this tour, Asia had one of the most significant of all of these experiences, I suppose, was Greg Lake joining you shortly before this Japanese concert, and of course, the departure of John Wetton. Uh, now the booklet explains all about it in detail, but what was it like for you as a band uh, welcoming a, a new bass player, a new vocalist in? Well, I think that the fact was that we were committed to uh, to this Asia and Asia thing. You know, a lot of stuff had gone behind the scenes and, uh, you know, we didn't want to let the side down, as it were. So I think that when John had left, um, Greg was, in many ways, was a, was a, a natural choice because... You know, he, he he was available for a start. Um, yeah, uh, he'd worked with Carl, uh, obviously extensively, uh, and, and vocally. You know, his voice was not dissimilar to John's. There was a slightly deeper register, but yeah, um, in terms of that that classic English progressive rock voice, you know, John and Greg were, I would say, were the two were the two top guys. Maybe Peter as well, but you know. Mm. Um, in terms of that particular sound of a voice and, and the fact that you know Greg had been in King Crimson and, yeah, uh, yeah. and then John took over in King Crimson. Yeah. Uh, they, they were both from Bournemouth at the time. So there's a, there was a funny kind of uh, almost uh, uh, you know, a parallel connection. I think that when, when Carl suggested, I think we, we all thought it was a, a great idea. So that was it. And he came and we rehearsed for about six weeks and, um, and that was it. 
Brilliant. Six weeks. Gosh, still a very, very short time to pick up all that, all that material. Now, as part of this, you've got the Blu-ray, you've got the whole concert on video. And I, I loved watching this. It was great, great fun. And obviously, as you say, much better quality than the, the bootlegs which are out there. And I particularly loved your amazingly long bank of keyboards and, and seeing you dashing up and down it. But I also noticed you were singing a lot of backing vocals with several microphones set up along so that you could always get to one. But that's not something that you do so much for Yes, is it, backing vocals? No, I don't think so, because I, I don't really sing much on the albums, um, if mm. at all. I don't, think, I don't think I've really ever sung on a Yes album, um, other than Vocoder on... Uh, yes on uh, drama um so it's not re- it's not really my um my thing with yes and but of course with with asia you know i was quite a fundamental part of the, the back and vocal yes. side of things so it was a, a lot more relevant for me to be um singing back and back and vocals with with asia than it than it is with yes yeah yeah absolutely it's a fantastic set and we've got a one of these deluxe box sets to give away to a listener and we're going to come back to that right at the end of our chat um and uh, you're going to ask a question for for people to answer and we'll see who uh, who wins that so that really is remarkable i very highly recommend that that box set but we're going to go on to yes in europe so that was asia in asia now we're yes in europe and the close to the edge 50th anniversary tour 2022 much uh, much delayed obviously so it kicks off finally on the 15th of june in glasgow and then i'm coming along to see you at the royal albert hall in london on the 21st and you're also playing uh, the republic of ireland but not the european dates playing relayer as um, we had hoped, which has been shifted up to 2023. So these have been twice rescheduled, these shows, due to the pandemic. And I think the last time you played was right back in July 2019. So how are you and the band feeling about getting out to see live audiences again? Well, I think we're, we're, we're getting very excited about it because I think that, uh, you know, almost three years out is, is, is a long time, particularly for the guys of our age, you know, so... <laughs> It's a lifetime, you know, so um, yes. uh, I know that the other guys in the band are equally looking forward to it and, and playing the holder close to the edge and all the other little bits of stuff we're going to throw in, which will be public knowledge when we played the first show in Glasgow, I suppose. But um, <laughs> yes. yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's going gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna to be great. I think that um, it's, it's been too long and, uh, yeah. you know, I, I just want to get, get out there again and, and start uh, feeling, feeling our way back into it. Indeed. So, how's Alan doing? He must have been very upset about having his drums stolen recently. That's a terrible thing to happen. Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was awful. Um, so, yeah, um, we're looking forward to uh, seeing him again and uh, you know getting getting in shape for the tour. Excellent. So, uh, from what you said just there, not not the whole band are in the UK as yet. I suppose that would be quite a long way in advance, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, we start rehearsals in about ten days or so. So, um, right, right. But I think everyone's been doing their homework and uh, yes. you know working working on their parts, hopefully. And, yes, uh, yes. And then uh, <laughs> then we we put it all together when the the American contingent come over. So, uh, yes. so yes. that should be good. Obviously. Yes. Steve, myself, and of course John. John lives over here now. John Davison. So, uh, oh, does he? Sort of, right. Yeah. So there's just uh, half American and half half British. So yes, that's them. good. Yeah, excellent. So uh, let's talk about Close to the Age. Then it's obviously an iconic work in progressive rock. And I was just thinking about when before you joined Yes with Trevor Horn in 1980. I'm assuming that you were both big fans of this record. Yeah, I think so. Pretty much so. I think that um, I, I was very much into the first period of Yes, I suppose, with, with uh, Tony Kay and then the Fragile, mm. and of course Close to the Edge was, was really the, the peak of, I think, that whole build-up of Yes. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the other albums came, but I think it, it's, a, it's a milestone, you know. I think that, yeah. that uh, it's, it's, it's what... It's the holy grail to the majority of Yes fans, I think. It's the it's the iconic album that everyone looks to as a not just in terms of Yes's music, but also in terms of uh, the whole progressive rock movement. That um, yeah. uh, you know there are those 
iconic albums by like the first King Crimson album, for instance, uh, Court of the Crimson King, you know, Selling England by the Power by Genesis, um, Dark Side of the Moon by um, Pink Floyd, of course. Yes. So these these are the albums that I think you know the the real fans would probably say close to the edge is the one for yes. And so absolutely, yeah. You know, it's a fantastic album. I remember when I was a student, and that was on the turntable all the time in our bed sits. You know, uh, the Roger Dean bubble logo was up um, on the wall and the poster. Uh, yes. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it was the album, and, and um, I just think that. It's pretty well faultless as an album, certainly. I know there's only three tracks on it, but it's just so many different mood changes, so many different scene changes. It's phenomenal playing by all the all the all the members of the band. I think that, uh, yeah, particularly, uh, I think I think Rick Wakeman's contributions are enormous on that album with all the big Mellotron, the glorious chords and, and you and I you know there's big major chords everywhere uh, it's just <laughs> yeah. it's just a fantastic it's a fantastic experience and I think that's how a lot of the Yes fans actually viewed it it was almost like a uh, it was an out of body experience to listen to mm-hmm. how the, the guys have put this, this album together so yeah. I've got a yappy dog in the back yes right? yes gives us a bit of colour yeah. uh, so I mean you've played Close to the Age in its entirety many times uh, with Yes uh, but I believe Steve recently said that there's a difference this time um, and it's going to be played in its original key for the first time, perhaps. And that reminds me of, of what you said in the in the booklet for Asia, where you had to, to lower the keys to to cope with Greg Lake's different different voice, different register. So how does it ch- affect your parts in Close to the Edge, then, if you've got to change keys and so on? Um, it's not that difficult, actually, because... That's one thing I, I, I'm not too bad at is actually being able to transpose mm. fairly easily. So it's, it's not a huge thing. And, and it's only certain sections, I think, that were actually detuned to... and Because the, you know, the, the, the vocal gets so high in places, I, I don't even think John Anderson would be able to get there no. again. You know, it's just sort of freak of nature that you get to that kind of... That kind of pitch. So uh, <laughs> I think historically they always did that. They always brought certain sections of it down, uh, yeah. down the key, so it was more uh, accessible. But you know, it's going to be a brave challenge to uh, uh, not so much for me, but for for for, for John Davis and, and and for the, the, mm. the vocals because they're going to be, you know, upper key. And uh, but you know, John's a, John's a fantastic singer. So he, yeah. He, um, he, he can handle most things that, uh, that I've ever seen, you know. Absolutely, and I'm very much looking forward to, to hearing what else you are going to play. However, um, are you disappointed not to be playing Relayer this year? Well, I think it's, um, it's, it's there's two sides to it, really. I certainly, um, in terms of where we would be, it's, it's an extremely challenging album, and uh, yeah. I think that, you know, for us to come with having spent the three years off the road and trying to pull off Relay in the way that we'd want to pull it off yeah. would have been, uh, you know, pretty difficult, to be honest. But um, mm. uh, And, of course, coupled with that, that the fact that the the anniversary crept up on us of, of yes. uh, close to the edge, I think that, the, that everybody felt it was, it was something that we didn't want to miss that opportunity. You know, certainly, yeah. had we done the Relay album last year or the year before uh, I think we'd still be doing uh, close to the edge this yes. time out as well so I think you know with with all the touring that we've got planned we're going to Japan in September mm-hmm. uh, we've got the, the United States in, in October and probably November so yeah. I think by that time we'll, we'll have started to find our feet on that stage again and then we'll be hopefully <laughs> ready to, uh, to to you know get down serious and, 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 and tackle the Relay album. I mean, we did actually do uh, half of the Relay album yes. um, on the previous tour, the Royal Affair tour, so yes. it's not um, beyond the band so by any stretch. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just the way things map out. I think it's good to get the feel of getting back in there again with, with maybe some more, more familiar material, although... There's there's a couple of surprises we're going to be springing on this one. We've got excellent uh, the album, the quest under our belt. So I think it would be you know shame not to 
do a couple of tracks from that album, which we, we intend to do. Yep. Um, and then, of course, you know, take your pick from uh, Yes's <laughs> massive catalogue of what <laughs> else we're going to do. You know, so uh, hey, we've got a pretty good idea of, of what we, you know, what the set's going to be like, and um, mm. I, I think it will. It, it, you know, people will get off of it. People will like it. Great. So, speaking about the quest, then uh, that's done really well, hasn't it? In terms of sales and charts and and feedback and everything, that must be really pleasing. Well, yeah, I think that um, certainly from the previous album, which a lot of people said, oh, it's not much of a, you know, we didn't really like um, having them mm. there. But mm. uh, I think some people go back on it and go, actually, and yeah, no, I can sort of see where they were coming from with that. But uh, I think you know we moved up a bit with that one, mm. uh, and I think that. The whole thing about Yes is, I think, one of the reasons why it has such longevity as a band is the fact that there are all these different periods that, that uh, you can reflect on. They're uh, like chapters in a book, you know. And you can yeah. say, well, you know, it can't be brilliant all the time, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, or put it another way, appeal to a certain fan all the time. So uh, mm. they're always going to pick, pick albums out that they like or don't like. You know, it's, it's all a matter of taste, but... Uh, uh, mm. I certainly think that from our standpoint, we like to challenge ourselves and, and, and do things differently. You know, rather than setting the die in the same cast every time, we, we have the opportunity yeah. to experiment with different styles, different influences. You know, I think that if you look at the different influences, say, for instance, with the Relay album, where there was an enormous amount of jazz rock influence, yeah. I think, uh, in that album, you know, and you go to... 90125, which is very heavily influenced by the the 80s sound. You know, so yes. you have all these different areas of Yes's music, and I think that's the beauty of the band is that it's all about the contributions of all all the wonderful musicians that I've, I've been privileged to work with, putting together these albums. That uh, you know, it, it's it's not so much for ourselves, but for the fans as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And one of the aspects of the quest that I particularly enjoy is the the orchestras the orchestration and we we spoke to um paul k joyce who did the orchestrations and uh, i think that really really helped lift the album yeah i think it's it makes it it's a different angle on it you know i, mean, I know previous yes albums featured orchestras um, yes. but it's another little trick up the sleeve that you can pull out and uh and if it works then great you know and if it help, helps to enhance the listening uh, pleasure of an album, then then all, all, all the good for it, you know. Yeah, brilliant. Well, another of your collaborations, another of your albums that I still play a lot is Halcyon Hymns from the Downs Braid Association. Um, am I right in saying that, that you've got another album in the works? Yeah, we've actually got another album that we've completed. So uh, Great. I think that should be coming out sometime in September. So, or September, October, maybe. But it's a great working relationship that I've got with Chris because we don't need to be in the same room and, and I think that's where we've worked pretty much all the way through is that mm. uh, it, it's a you know I'll feed him some ideas and then he'll come back to me with modifications and then we'll, we'll we just yeah. keep chewing and throwing like that and uh, uh, it's it's a great way of working and I think that the new album is, uh, is, is going to be not along the same lines but I think it's going to be yet another variants of, mm. uh, of themes that we, you know, the, the stuff that we write. Does it have poetry in it in the same way? Um, not so much on this one. I think there might be a couple of occasions where, where we've got some poetry but uh, mm. uh, I think it's more, you know, we, we've gone more for the songs and the, and the performances. I mean, Dave Bainbridge uh, uh. has done some fantastic stuff on this album. Uh, yeah. um, some of the solos, guitar solos, absolutely awesome. You know, so Excellent. <laughs> From, from our early beginnings where we had, it was really just two men and a drum machine, you know, we've uh, <laughs> expanded to to much more of a, you know, a, a bigger picture. And I think that uh, it's it's something that, that I really enjoy. It's, it's, it's more of a, I suppose it's a release from, you know, working with, you know, the, the big mothership like Yes or, or yeah. Asia or whatever. Uh, yeah. In the same way that when I used to write with John uh, Wetton with the Icon project, mm. it was very much a, a you know a side project that we enjoyed. It was almost like a guilty pleasure that we could really mm. just do do whatever we wanted without having to be you know conscious of the fact that well you've got 
you know, you've got a bass player and a drummer you've got to think about and all the rest of it. So, you know, from my standpoint, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a very creative, um, mm. partnership with myself and Chris. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, I hope the new album is just as good. I'm sure it will be as the, as the previous one, House in Hymns, which is great. Okay. So it's time for the question for the giveaway. This, incredible box set uh, that we've got asia in asia so jeff what kind of a question have you come up with well i'd like to know the name of the venue where it was recorded ah right okay so if you've been listening carefully or look it up or whatever then just send an email to show at yesmusicpodcast.com uh, with your answer to that question from Jeff. Okay, so thank you very much indeed, Jeff, for talking to us again. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. It's always nice to talk to you. And uh, I'll see you at the uh, the RAA. Uh, well, indeed, yes, next month. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Bye now. Bye bye. I've had all yes music podcast every week. I-